right now, the main gas that comes out of Hawaiian volcanoes is water, steam. So this is happening all the time. But some scientists argue it would take far too long to create such vast oceans by volcanic outgassing. Instead, Earth may have had some help. The water in our oceans might have come from outer space, delivered to the surface by massive ice-bearing comets. The evidence for these ancient impacts is impossible to find today, since the original surface of our planet has long since been eroded or destroyed. But there's one place that preserves a record of impacts from that early era, our moon. Every one of those craters was a meteorite explosion at some time. That's incredible. Oh, there's, there's a nice one with fractures and another bigger crater out here, small craters. The moon's surface is littered with craters, some of them hundreds of miles across. In fact, the moon was ravaged by more than a million major impacts in its early years. Since Earth is much more massive, its gravitational pull would have attracted even more debris, resulting in possibly tens of millions of impacts. We all hear about the impact 65 million years ago that wiped out the dinosaurs. And you're getting that kind of impact something like once a month on the early Earth. But this rain of debris left over from the formation of the solar system continues for several hundred million years. And in this cosmic debris field, comets containing huge amounts of dust and ice would have been plentiful. Like dirty snowballs the size of mountains, roughly half their mass was water. One NASA scientist, Michael Muma, wonders if these comets were the source of the water in Earth's oceans. One possibility is that Earth's water was delivered by the impact of bodies from beyond the Earth. These would naturally be the comets, which are rich in water. The proof in that would be to measure the composition of the cometary water and to compare that with the composition of uh, water in our oceans. But studying comets is a tricky business. In the last 20 years, just a handful have passed close enough to examine in detail, including one in 1997 called Comet Hale Bop. A uh, comet like Hale Bop would deliver about 10% of the water needed to fill one of the Great Lakes. This is a lot of water. Uh, of course, the oceans are much larger, and so we need many more comets uh, to fill the oceans. But we're fortunate. We had many such comets in the early solar system, so we have every reason to believe that it was cometary delivery that brought water to the early Earth. Muma thinks that the heat of an impact would have evaporated the ice within a comet, creating storm clouds over vast areas of the planet. These clouds produced a deluge of hot, possibly acidic rain that continued for millions of years. At first, the rain would have formed lakes and rivers, and eventually, water would cover almost the entire globe. But there's a problem with this theory. Earth's oceans contain a mixture of normal water, H2O, 
and a much smaller amount of a more exotic kind, known as HDO, or heavy water, which contains an extra neutron. In the comets analyzed so far, the proportions of these two kinds of water don't match the composition of water in our oceans. They have twice the amount of heavy water that uh, we see in Earth's oceans. So if they were the comets that delivered Earth's oceans, they wouldn't fit the bill, basically. They don't have the right properties. But MUMA hasn't given up. The comets already studied come from the outer reaches of the solar system. And he thinks comets originating closer to the sun might be different. Formed at higher temperatures, these comets could have a lower proportion of heavy water, more closely matching our oceans. And tonight, MUMA hopes to test this idea by getting a first-hand look at one of these elusive comets. If its chemistry is different, and if the heavy water, light water, is like that on Earth, it would be the first proof positive or the smoking gun evidence uh, that comets did, in fact, deliver water to the early Earth. But first, the team has to hunt down the comet. As soon as he has acquired it, we should see an image of it on this screen. There it is. All right. Yes, sir. Right there. You can see the elongated material flowing outward from the nucleus. Joel, that looks excellent. With the comet in the crosshairs of their telescope, they can home in on the kind of water it's carrying. Bring up the spectrogram. Yeah. It's moment of truth here. Uh, yeah. Okay. People often ask, how can you measure water in an object that is 100 million miles away? We do this by a method called spectroscopy. It's a little bit like taking fingerprints. The little ridges on your fingers look different for every person. And in the same way, the light that is emitted by a given molecular compound is different. It emits at different wavelengths. A little dark spot. I think we just need okay, more. Let's do the long one. It's this one, right? But it turns out, this comet is a very dirty snowball indeed. There's so much dust on the surface that it can't reflect enough light for the team to find out what kind of water is on board. It did not brighten as expected. This was a bit of a disappointment. Comets are quite fickle. You know, they're unpredictable. In some ways, they're like cats. They both have tails, and they both do what they want to. But with astronomers finding two or three comets a year from the inner part of the solar system, MUMA could soon have another chance to test his controversial ideas about the origin of Earth's oceans. One of the key things that every scientist keeps in mind is you should never fall in love with your theory. So it's an idea, it's a hypothesis, it fits all the known facts, but it has not yet been proven. And we must be willing to give it up and modify it if it is not proven. But we will learn something in doing so. It's still possible that comets played a role. In fact, it's hard to imagine 